What's up, welcome back, Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Society of the Snow, the new survival thriller film from J.A. Bayona. This is a Spanish film out now in the U.S. on Netflix, Spanish title La Sociedad de la Nieve. This film depicts the 1972 Andes flight disaster, and it is a harrowing movie, and I thought this movie was really good. Honestly, I really liked it. This is a film that I think we widely expect to be nominated for Best International Feature Film at the Oscars. We know it already made the Oscar shortlist. Of course, the submission from Spain, Jay Bayona, Spanish film director. Most recently seen, of course, with movies directing Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. He also did some Rings of Power TV directing. New film from him. This is a movie that um, depicts, you know, Uruguayan uh, people made by the Spanish, nonetheless, feels more, uh, I think, grounded and accurate to how things might have been. This is for a few key reasons. One, it's cast, you know, by Uruguayan and Argentinian actors, most of them unknowns. This story had previously been adapted by Hollywood with a bunch of white people in the movie A Lie, featuring uh, famous faces such as Ethan Hawke, despite the fact that. Uh, there were no, you know, Americans in this. So it's cool to, I think, kind of get like a refresh to the story because it's certainly very ripe for adaptation. And also this film is, you know, obviously has a lot more distance from the tragic events and is based off a the book of the same name by Pablo Viersi. And that's notable because Viersi actually knew many of the crash victims. So there's a lot more perspective and grace um, in, a, I think, a deeper way with this movie than the Hollywood adaptation from a long time ago. So I think The Society of Snow is really good. Certainly harrowing, you know, certainly um, difficult to watch at times, but really this is just a pretty epic story, honestly, about this uh, plane flight uh, filled primarily with a, you know, a bunch of young men, this Uruguayan rugby team on a flight from uh, Montevideo, Uruguay across the Andes Mountains to uh, Chile. That's where they're trying to go. But due to uh, various issues, they end up crashing in the Andes Mountains. And, uh, you know, a bunch of search and rescue attempts never locate the plane. And thus, this group, those who survive the initial crash, have to try and survive with seemingly no help ever coming to find them. And everyone out in the rest of the world, presuming they're already long since dead. And the depiction of the crash itself, I think, is really uh, riveting. You know, obviously, it's a really hard thing to watch and really painful thing. But once you get past that, the whole uh, how will all these men and women survive? Like, what are they going to do? Um, pretty, I think, pretty pretty challenging. You know, there's a, uh, a handful of, I guess, set pieces, you could say. One of those, of course, is the crash itself and the initial... Um, panic and how people start to survivors start to uh carry out the dead and take sense take stock of who's alive and who is not injured things of that once we get past that though you have uh some of the guys kind of climbing back up the mountain to try and find the bisected other half of the plane go to the tail try and locate uh, the radio or other supplies you have series of avalanches and how uh, claustrophobic that is when a lot of the, the survivors get uh, buried within the plane they are hiding out in. Um, I think that was done pretty well. But of course, kind of the main thing with this is how, how these people managed to survive. Uh, you know, with, uh, with 16 or 17 of them ended up surviving in the end uh, is cannibalism and, you know, eating uh, the dead to keep the living alive and hold that hope to eventually uh, survive this incredible ordeal and the way the movie handles that i think is done pretty well where it spares you the like watching anything super bloody and gross it's not like a cannibal movie per se it's not like bones and all you know from luca guadagnino it's not about that like, it keeps that away but it's more about the philosophical uh reasoning behind doing such a thing it's like is your uh will to live as a living person is that greater are you more entitled to that than the rights of the dead for example you know and um, a lot most of these men have kind of deep uh catholic beliefs and they feel like they're kind of going against god by doing such a thing so that's 
I think done to, to pretty pretty interesting uh, and, and and well nuanced uh, effect. Honestly, um, the movie has some voiceover from this character Numa. It wasn't my favorite aspect of the movie, honestly, because it was kind of inconsistent. Like, I didn't necessarily need all the voiceover. Uh, nonetheless, it's all right. Um, kind of watch it whenever they're doing any kind of hiking. Honestly, um, you know, a time getting like stranded out there and away from the plane dealing with the exposure like all that i think is pretty pretty harrowing pretty crazy um and this movie is filmed in a pretty epic way where they filmed in all sorts of locations there were several units making this movie they have a lot of exterior footage of the actual andes and they actually went to the crash site for some stuff and other other filming was done you know in a more controlled setting so nonetheless it looks really uh convincing as a crashed plane atop this kind of like plateau valley in the middle of nowhere in the Andes, this massive mountain range, of course, like it, it looks tremendous. And to me, I think the movie like really picks up where it's pretty long. Honestly, maybe the movie could be a little shorter, but once it picks up where you have these two characters, uh, Nando and Roberto, and they decide that they are going to uh, hike for help. Basically they had previously hiked all the way to the tail of the plane, locating the radio and, you know, despite having some electrical uh, function, they're just unable to get the radio to work, and they realize this is their only option. And it's pretty epic, honestly, watching these two guys hike 10-plus days over 38 miles with basically no supplies, no equipment in the middle of the Andes Mountains in the winter, waiting for the thaw to at least begin, you know, with the seasons being at least a little bit more favorable to them, but just an absolutely epic thing. And there's this amazing buildup early on that hike where the guys are hiking up and they have a co comrade with them still hiking up to what they think is going to be leading them to like being able to see into Chile. Right. And what they see is just more mountain, more winter, more massive range. And it's like this huge buildup moment. And it's kind of almost like defeating thing. And like, where do they go? And then the build up to when they actually finally find help. And it's like a really euphoric thing. And I think this is a really effective portrayal of a, you know, huge tragedy, but also speaks to kind of the determination, the perseverance of those people that did survive. Like it's really well done. So I think it's certainly deserving of the Oscar uh, nomination. I think it's pretty, pretty likely to get that by the way, what Netflix is backing. Although I probably wouldn't pick it to win right now. I, I just feel like it's going to have a hard time beating uh, the zone of interest, for example, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. I, I like the movie a lot. And honestly, really awesome cap to the year Netflix had with movies between movies they produced movies. They just acquired, like it's been pretty uh, steady, you know, the last uh, few months. Right. And maybe this is not as most hyped up, but as Zack Snyder's rebel moon or Bradley Cooper's maestro. But to me, it's, I think a really worthy and well done movie. And yeah, shout out Netflix, shout out Jay Bayona. Everyone did a really good job with it. Shout out the actors, honestly, which not all of them uh, in their roles are given a lot of characterization per se, but for a cast of mainly unknowns, I mean, they, they did a really good job. But yeah, that's Society of the Snow. Let me know what you thought of it. And for more movie reviews, as well as more Oscar talk, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.